This is Segway, a weekly program exploring the lives and work of the people of Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Segway, the show that allows us to talk about issues and ideas here on the campus of Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. I'm Kevin Leonard, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm very pleased to be here today with Dr. Tim Staples, Executive Director of the SIUE East St. Louis Center. Dr. Staples earned a bachelor's degree in historical studies from SIUE in 2000. He completed a master's degree in educational leadership in 2003 and a doctorate in leadership and administration in 2017, both from Aurora University. He joined SIUE in July of 2018 as the inaugural director of the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion, housed in the Office of Student Affairs, and was named executive director of the East St. Louis Center in 2019. Welcome to Segway, Dr. Staples. Thank you. Let's begin by having you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself. So how did you become interested in educational leadership and administration? Well, um, I grew up um, right here in East St. Louis. Um, And so one of the things I've always admired was my teachers. And I I knew early on that I wanted to be an educator. Um, In East St. Louis, I knew our teachers was the greatest resource. And so um, I just set off um, in college, you know, looking to be an educator, really didn't know which subject. And um, then got became very interested in history. We had some amazing history professors. Um, One of my professors that I consider a mentor who's a maritime faculty here, uh, Dr. Shirley Portwood, uh, was really instrumental in uh, my decision to go and teach history. So um, I went to Chicago, set off to do that after I graduated in 2000, and um, something different happened. Uh, (laughs) I was you know, looking for a teaching job, and I was recruited to be a dean of students at a middle school. Um, it, it, it was it was something. It was different. I was substitute teaching at that time and working at the Illinois Math and Science Academy as a resident counselor. And uh, there I was in my early 20s, the dean of students of a middle school, and um, there where my interest began. And interestingly enough, I worked for years um trying to get back into the classroom so I say I'm going to the classroom I use that way to get in the district and I said I'm going to go back to the classroom and every year for four years when I made that arrangement I got talked out of it well we really need you here we really need you here and so um, I again um, was um, at a um, job fair walking around and got recruited to be an assistant principal so that's how I really got interested in leadership and really began to understand the impact that you have both on 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 the students and the families so all Mm -hmm. of my roles had me really engaged in community and so um, that's what I really um, loved and what continually got me interested in education. How how can I go in an environment and use the resources that are there to make a positive difference um, that are that's a generational difference and not just an uh, immediate difference. Well, that's that's really fantastic to hear. Thank you for sharing that. I, I really uh, am, am I'm glad that you mentioned uh, Dr. Shirley Portwood, uh, whom I've had the the great pleasure and honor of meeting, um, and uh, you know someone who I think had tremendous influence on on uh, you know many many generations of of SIUE students. Just uh, a really uh, I think tremendous um, and uh, an influential faculty member in the Department of History. Mm-hmm. So uh, were there other were there other people who who kind of uh, supported you or inspired you along your journey as you as you moved through the world of of uh, education and administration? Uh, yes, you know, just starting uh, with people who are here, um, uh, Dr. Earlene Patterson. Uh, oh, okay. I always say, just never would have made it through school without her, and um, and we have some professors. I, I spent my life in Peck Hall. It's interesting. <laughs> I at some point I ended up in student affairs because I was a commuter student. I didn't know student affairs existed. I knew Peck Hall and my parking lot, and I went to work my 
two and three jobs. And but um, with you know, Dr. Cheeseborough, who's still here, mm-hmm. um, you know, and uh, Dr. U- uh, Professor Eugene Redmond. Um, oh, so yes. you know, my life was Peck Hall. I I didn't know the muck as a place where there were student activities. It was the potato chip building. I went to go get <laughs> refreshments and come back, you know, to class. So. Um, very um, influential, um, and also in high school, um, I had a, a jazz band um, a teacher, Ron Carter. I'm still in touch with him. Uh, he, you know, went on to direct a band at Northern Illinois University. But um, very, very influential on, uh, I would say where the direction of, of my career has gone. So I've been, and there's just been so many, you know, mm-hmm. just getting through and naming them. I, I, I pick people to be my mentors and sometimes never tell them that they are. They are people <laughs> that I look and um, I'm ex- inspired by, um, you know, what they did. You know, one person I met and it, it would never know, um, she's actually the retired vice president at Princeton University, uh, uh, vice president of, um, of campus life. And as I say that, her name is not dropping in my mind, but um, Jess, I heard her speak at Miami University. Um, she was a uh, alum there, and just just she inspired me. I got to spend some time with her, and um, it, it was it was just magnificent. And so I looked at her career, never talked to her, but just looked at the things that she was doing, and um, you know, um, just followed her. Okay. Well, well, thank you so much for for talking about the the people who who really were uh, supportive mentors for you. Many of some of whom are still here, of mm-hmm, course, mm-hmm. Uh, in both in the history department and, of course, Dr. Erlene Patterson um, uh, in uh, in SOAR. Mm-hmm. And I I also uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit. I know that your journey took you beyond Illinois, uh, yes. although you started out, of course, in East St. Louis at SIUE, and then you went to Chicago. Uh, can you tell us about where you went after uh, after you left Chicago? Yes. Well, I, I would say it's very interesting because uh, <laughs> I talk to students all the time. I had the most, I've had the most amazing serendipitous life. I, I did not know how to plan or would not and things happen. So um, I ended up um, after Ch- um, the Chicago area becoming an assistant principal at Urbana High School. And I, I did that for uh, about a year. And I really missed the college world. And I said, you know, I have all the time in the world. I was just 30 by the time I finished that role. And, you know, I can go back. But I, I want to get some more. So at the age of 30, after having been a, you know, you know, assistant principal and and running a lot of things i decided to go be a resident hall director at illinois state (laughs) oh had a ball i had a ball and so i'm like okay i'm getting ready for the second year and then um uh, the assistant dean there rick lewis at the time he came to me he said "Uh, some friends at miami university is looking for someone who has residence life experience and diversity experience and so i said okay you know why not you know miami university on my way to florida and they're like no it's ohio okay miami university i'm on my way to ohio so (laughs) went there and interviewed and liked it and on my way back they called and i accepted it so i spent four years there working in residence life diversity Mm -hmm. um and leadership and ended up doing a doctoral uh, internship in athletics so here i was a person who did not um watch football becoming um a trained um instant replay technician for the Mac and the Big Ten. <laughs> so, and, and my family was like, you? You doing what? <laughs> Do they know you know nothing about sports? So um, ended up being a liaison for student affairs with athletics. And um, and so that was amazing. From there, I ended up in Washington, D.C., working also in residence life, um, leadership and training, leadership development training. And right before, and that was amazing and again. And um, right before coming here, um, I went to work. I needed to move to South Carolina to be close to my family. Uh, mm-hmm. We had a loss of one, one of my niece's children. And so just to be close, I ended up working at the um, South Carolina Governor's School of Math 
and Science, which is a residential high school similar to the Illinois Math and Science Academy here. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I work, director of Campus Life. Uh, very excited about it. You know, you know, again, it was like being father of 200 students. Um, you know, some liked me, several did not. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of parents, when they dropped them off, some of them just said, I'm so sorry. I'm like, why? Why? What's going to happen? I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was a very rewarding. I'm still in touch with a lot of those students. Two of them oh, wow. have become like my children, been here visiting and call my mother grandma. So <laughs> so, so that that's where I've been. It's been very interesting. But I can see in that experience, I got to, you know, travel with the football team, just stuff that I never managed and sitting in a history class mm -hmm. um, that I would be doing. Um, and so it's been exciting. It's been serendipitous. I, I think the the advice I, I often have to students, you know, why not? <laughs> you know, um, don't turn down everything. Just, you know, kind of see where some good things will go. So positive risk taking is one of the things that that uh, vi retired um, vice president always said. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, and thank you so much for 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 that, because that. Uh, I knew that you'd been a number of places because we've had some conversations before, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't didn't really uh, recognize how how serendipitous that it had been that, that just you know opportunities open for you and you decided to say yes to those. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, in, in 2018 you began your your journey or you returned to SIUE uh, as the director of the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion, which is now known as the Inclusive Excellence Education and Development Hub. So, uh, what was that like? You you were uh, you were the director of what was then the CSDI, and then after about a year or so, you became the director of the East St. Louis Center. Uh, so, tell us a little bit about what that was like. Well, it, well, it was exciting for one. When I first started, I was returning to my alma mater, mm -hmm. um, and I was moving um, kind of out of residence life, even though I ended up doing training when I got here with mm -hmm. diversity training, which is wonderful. Um, it was great, because I'd never, many people join, uh, uh, um, you know, different areas of student affairs, and they, they definitely enhance it, but oftentimes you don't get t a chance to create a space. And so there was a, a empty space. I was able to get furniture and create curriculum and programs I mean, I called it curriculum because we do, uh, stu uh, you know, mm -hmm. curriculum uh, for programming. And um, it was a very exciting to actually connect with my friends across uh, the country at different universities to just talk to them about, you know, what it means to develop. You know, mm -hmm. a center. Um, I've actually been able to support the development of two other centers at other universities. Some of my mentees who are working in diversity and in student affairs in different areas. Um, so it was a very exciting experience. And, you know, again, serendipitous that, you know, I applied not knowing that there was that we had not had a center at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was wonderful. And um, probably within, you know, it was open in September. September, um, after putting everything in that same September, I was asked to be interim director at the East St. Louis campus. So, oh and so I'd only uh, been in the role a few times. So at some point, I was doing both jobs. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Going back, spending time in East St. Louis and spending time there to really help the East St. Louis campus um, transition. And then, you know, I, I got to the point where I thought, you know, okay, I, I was done with that, and you mm -hmm. know, so I'm back to the center. And then um, I was contacted, you know, by the provost that there was still. Um, um, I need in East St. Louis, and was I interested? And I said, you know, yes, yes. Okay. So it was um, uh, been very exciting. It is a role that I again I just didn't say no to, and I haven't wasn't used to grant uh, management. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a role that I uh, you know ups downs bumps and toss that I had to learn uh, mm -hmm. what that is, what it was, what it's all about. And um, so that's that's where we are now. I feel like I'm getting into the swing and the understanding of all of the processes and now mm -hmm. ready to see what the East St. Louis Center would be at this next level. Great. 
So tell us a little bit more about what the uh, East St. Louis Center does mm-hmm. and uh, you know who it serves. Okay. So well, you know that the campus is very historical to SIUE. It was where um, the Southern Illinois University System first began to offer courses, uh, mm-hmm. offer uh, college services and courses. So right now, the center primarily serves pre-K through um, high school. We have our largest program is our Head Start, Early Head Start program. Mm-hmm. We have um, seven centers located throughout St. Clair County and looking to open an eighth center this coming fall in, in O'Fallon, Illinois. And um, so it is a, a federal program, but we, you know, provide educational services for infant to toddler, uh, through to infant toddler through, um, I would say, a uh, pre-kindergarten mm-hmm. um, so very excited about that program and, and for high school we have around uh, five upward bound programs two are in collinsville three we call our east st louis base and these programs serve high school students um from um you know underserved backgrounds um really trying to encourage them to go to college so there mm-hmm. are courses that they take um college enrichment courses they receive tutoring um we have a couple that are on trips now they, they get to go um do college tours um then one of the programs we have that's historical is our performing arts program where we mm-hmm. offer um, dance music um, and we're looking to get into some visual arts um, and I want to talk a little bit more about performing arts because this is hopefully going to be a great year about that and then we also have our veterans upper bound program oh. um, and then the most unique thing that I love talking about is our learning resource center who knows what this place is? It's hard to describe. It's technically a library, but let me tell you what happens. Um, we also do career service um, services there. Um, we do um, uh, interview trainings. We help with resumes. Uh, it is a fully functioning library with interlibrary mm-hmm. loan capabilities, but we offer classes from crocheting to financial literacy. Um, it is the business center for much of that area in East St. Louis because it is, uh, um, you know, an internet connection for many people. We offer private space for people to do their taxes and other things that they would need to do. We do free, uh, fa- uh, you know, faxing for, for mm-hmm. important documents that individuals in the community need. And so it's an amazing place. It's to catch all everything. We have a book club for the community. Mm-hmm. So the East St. Louis Center is both for education and service um, place for the community. In addition to our educational programs, you know, we have a We Care Clinic there. The SIUE School of Nursing hosts a We Care Clinic, which provide, um, you know, medical services for people in the community as, you know, there's no hospital in that that part of the community. And so it's very important in the School of Dental Medicine also have a dental clinic um, there as well. Um, so, um, their eye, um, they also have an eye clinic. So there are so many resources for families there. And last but not least, we share the the higher education campus with the Illinois Community College Board that hosts mm-hmm. community uh, college programs. So um, we have um, several programs there from um, nursing all the way to highway construction mm-hmm. um, there and welding. So it is a dynamic um uh, community service um, that's on that campus. It's just exciting. So many things are going on. It's, mm-hmm. it's just amazing. Yes. Well, thank you for, for uh, letting our listeners know about that. I, I have to say, uh, you know, I, I always look forward to those occasions when I can go down to the uh, East St. Louis campus because, as you as you say, it's actually a really vital and dynamic place. Mm-hmm. And and I, I, I'm so glad that you talked about the Learning Resource Center. Mm-hmm. I was there for a program uh, earlier this year, uh, the, the e-stories, the, you know, the people yes. who've been interviewed to talk about their experiences in the East St. Louis community. Uh, and not only were all of the presenters just just really um, 
uh, very engaging. They, they, they told wonderful stories about their experiences, and they really challenged, I think, uh, the, the kind of narratives that we often get told about cities like East St. Louis, uh, you know, which are narratives of decline. And, and when, you, when you talk to people who've lived their entire lives in the community, often what you find is that, that they, don't, they don't see the city as, as beset by, by problems or in an inexorable decline. Mm-hmm. But instead, they, they see, of course, they, they acknowledge the challenges, mm-hmm. but they also see the, the wonderful resources of the people uh, who, who live in the community and who are committed to it. And I'm so glad that you, you emphasized all the services that, uh, that the Learning Resource Center uh, provides for people who might not otherwise have access to, to the kinds of services that, that people in other communities sometimes take for granted. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have a couple of questions about uh, the, you know, the operations at the East St. Louis Center. How did the COVID pandemic really affect the, the operations there? Oh, major. It it really affected our, our program operations in the terms of um, we have one specific program that um, work with um, young people who are under court supervision or in foster care. Mm-hmm. And not being able to meet with those students, it was it was really um, it was really hard for the, for the staff. Um, so. You know, we were able to get uh, get funds through the help of our uh, SAUE uh, foundation office to uh, do food, um, you know, services. Book bags were purchased, and um, the former vice chancellor, um, retired vice chancellor for the foundation, Rachel Stack, um, led an effort to uh with one of our donors so we were able to deliver food at least to them but we were not able to see them um the there has been a decline in population of our head start early head start as the um, pandemic hit the populations uh um, went down and you know as you know the workforce Mm -hmm. issue that everyone's having it has hit us heavy as more people um have um left the different programs to go either, you know, stay at home um, because of fear of issues with the pandemic or find different paying jobs that one can work from home. Right. <laughs> so having that love of work from home and we understand um, how how that happened. So um, with, with our veterans program, we were thriving. We were thriving in that program, but it depends a lot on services. And so mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, other veteran services like in St. Louis and in Illinois and those centers were closed. So right now we're working hard on getting our numbers up. Um, in our high school up and down programs, the students got used to working and their families got used to them working. So it was harder to get them back to say, hey, come do this program and you won't be able to bring as much money home. So mm. they're very delicate situations to deal with because while it is valuable and we know it's valuable for the students to participate in the program, um, we know it's also valuable what they're doing. If they're working right. to you know, bring money home and to bring money for themselves, that's important as well. So we've had to really work hard on how to make that balance that we are meeting the expectations of the grant that's given to us, uh, we're bound to grant, as well as supporting those students and families about decisions that they needed um, to make. And so, and then some days we've, we had to close centers because of COVID mm. and, and that could still happen, that's still there. And when you right. close centers, somebody has to stop working. Yeah. to take care of the students. So um, COVID has had a great effect on us. It it, it has also helped us in, to be more creative in how we reach out, like, you know, staying connected with those students mm-hmm. in our project success through the, uh, the food deliveries. Yeah. Um, we also had families to come up. We did food trucks. Um, so we, that, that way we'd have families to come up at, you know, during time periods and they can pick up some food and then touch base with the counselors um, to talk about how the students are doing with their remote learning, et cetera. So, um, so it also taught us creativity. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear that, that there was such a creative response, even though, as you point out, that, you know, the pandemic has really, really affected people in East St. Louis, including the, the people served by, by the East St. Louis Center. Mm-hmm. So 
I want to highlight for for our listeners uh, an event that's coming up uh, this coming Wednesday, August third, the East St. Louis Higher Education Campus, where the SIUE East St. Louis Center and the the community college operations that you mentioned are housed, will be renamed to honor the late state uh, representative Wyvetter H. Young. Now talk to us about Representative Young and why this renaming is so important. Oh, when you think about uh, heroes that have inspired um, many in East St. Louis, myself included, um, Representative Young was a great influential advocate for downstate Illinois completely as a whole, but definitely the city of mm-hmm. East St. Louis. Um, you know, she made sure uh, that, you know, you kind of hear, you know, folks say that, you know, north of I-80 was always the concentration <laughs> of the state um, legislature, but she made sure that attention was paid to those she represented in the 114th and the surrounding areas. Um, you know, whether it is improvement on roads and other infrastructure, she was able to secure um, the, the right attention and funds that were needed. So I grew up knowing about her in mm-hmm. school. Um, you know, if I didn't know anything else, I may not have known who the governor was, so I was conscious enough to understand Jim Edgar was a governor. Um, we knew who Representative Wyvetta Young was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and was she a strong advocate for the East St. Louis Center for Higher Education in East St. Louis? Well, she was or, a strong advocate for higher education and a supporter okay. um, of education in East St. Louis. Yeah. I am very interested to talk to her daughter a little, to learn a little bit oh, more okay. um, about that. I, I uh, do know during the time that I was in high school, um, they talked about her a lot at the East St. Louis Center yeah. when I was there. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that I'm really looking forward to to being there for that that yes. ceremony. I think it's it's a very important uh, milestone. Yes, we're so, excited. <laughs> so I'm I'm also very interested in in your vision for the the future of the East mm-hmm. St. Louis Center. Uh, can you tell us what what you anticipate and what you look forward to in the in the coming years? Well, I'm looking for more growth in programs that are um, to support our pre K through 12 population. One of the areas we're missing right now is middle school. Um, So in the future, uh, we're working and looking at um, several grant opportunities and programs that will support middle school. Um, In the interim, we're going to partner with East St. Louis Public uh, School um, to do some things. And we have a couple of uh, middle schools that are close to our campus. We've already met with the administration of East St. Louis 189, and we're we're beginning this fall to support um, some STEM work within there, which include, uh, which will culminate in a Re, um, a, a reintroduction of the SIUE uh, science fair <laughs> in, in the spring. So um, that's my vision to do more support of that um, district and Cahokia School District as well um, and to grow our performing arts program. In fact, mm. that's what's happening this year. I um, kind of declared this year focus on performance and visual arts. And so uh, we're trying to, we have, what many people don't know is the performing arts program is, is free. Mm. It's an after school program, it's free, and the students learn magnificent things. And so this year, we're going to focus on field trips for all of the programs, which include a Head Start. Um, that's going to be interesting, chaperoning the Head Start field trip. But um, to go to some places in St. Louis, like the Sheldon, that's having um, different type of activities for um, different age students, um, engage our campus more in what's happening in the theater department and the music department here and that's how you connect them to our museum here so um those are some things um that i have planned for uh for the pre-k-12 population i'm also looking to enhance the faculty engagement program we we now have a couple of faculty who I would call affiliate faculty that we are have a program where um, we're connecting faculty research 
to programs for our students. And um, so we, we are beginning right now um, with um, some uh, professor in the School of Engineering that will be working with us this year, and we're hoping to expand it. We've had uh, faculty work with us on our garden, um, and we're looking to expand that as well. So that's the the vision, more robust programs that are supported by our faculty um, and also a middle school uh, program. Well, th- thank you so much. That that sounds great, um, and and I look forward to working with you. Uh, I, I'm I'm really excited to be able to support uh, your your vision of the East St. Louis Center, um, and uh, I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Tim Staples, for talking with us today about your experiences, your work at SIUE, and the SIUE East St. Louis Center. I look forward to hearing more about you and your center in the future. And as I mentioned, I really look forward to the ceremony, the renaming ceremony this coming week. And for our listeners, thank you for joining us. Stay safe and take care. This has been Segway, a production of the Department of Mass Communications at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. All rights reserved.